All right, guys, this is Brandon from 13 Market Moves again, and this is earnings season, so you guys are going to have to get a little bit used to me. And yes, Leo will do some of his uh, market videos as well, but um, I'm going to be covering today um, IBM earnings report. Um, they report on Monday, um, October 19th, after hours, and so... We think there's a play here, and so I want you to listen, and I want to present our research. I know that we've been knocking our researchers out of the park uh, recently, and uh, but there's more to come. So if you want to join our community, or if you want to find out more about our 13 Market Moves or any of the courses that we have, please click the link below and schedule a free 20-minute consultation with our senior traders. Let's um, dive right in. So couple of things about IBM is that IBM is a business that is um, trying to reinvent itself. And um, so I'm going to just go over right now some of the earnings history of IBM. And it's nothing spectacular. I mean, it's basically a dinosaur. There's nothing really special about it. Um, I know that they're trying to reinvent themselves and we'll talk more about it. But um, realistically, they really have not done very well um, in the past... Um, year and a half or so and so it remains to be seen what's going to happen I mean they're reporting um, consensus estimates right here um, they're reporting slight beats okay um, definitely in July they de uh, blew out the revenues and they guided um, um, pretty decently for the um, coming um, quarter and so we'll just kind of have to see how that pans out okay but really uh, this is a company that is nothing really special other than the fact that they are just consistently staying in line or beating slightly on their revenues or missing, okay? And so this year's been a mixed bag. I mean, they've been struggling, and there's nothing really here um, that suggests that, um, you know, IBM's making any type of headway. But we'll talk more about the recent um, October 9th, uh, 2020 announcement about them getting into cloud and AI business and sort of divesting their... Um, IT infrastructure business, which has been their bread and butter, but a very, very slow growth um, um, area. So um, we'll give you our take on that. But really, what we want you to understand is that really the earnings have been really nothing special. Okay, it's just been stagnant. Um, you know, they are a cash cow and they're paying a pretty decent dividend for people to be remain patient. But this is a company that lacks direction at the moment. One thing I want you to understand also is that we are entering into Q4, which has traditionally been a pretty bearish uh, month um, quarter for IBM. Okay, and so they reported inline revenues in um, October 16, 2019, and they missed on not revenue EPS and then revenues right here they missed. And so if you kind of go down, um, go into 2018, by the way, 2018, again, uh, was a pretty horrendously bad um, Q4 um, for all the stock market in the fall. If you remember that, um, it seemed like the selling would never stop. And we think that that may have some rhyme and analogy to our current environment currently, even though the only difference is in 2018, there was no election year cycle. Okay. But in 2018, again, they slightly beat on the EPS, uh, but they missed terribly on the revenues and it got punished for it. So we'll go over all of these chart analysis and um, kind of give you our take and how we're going to play it at 13 Market Moves. Okay, so let's dive into the details of things. And so one thing that I want to talk to you about is the daily earnings report from October 2019 to July uh, 2020 and I did actually also include the July earnings um, from 2019 as well the question that we have is what happened in Q3 and in Q3 like I said they beat on revenues and everything else um, but they basically um, reported earnings and that was lackluster and basically, the question that uh, the Wall Street community wants to ask is, so what is the growth plan at IBM? And to me, currently, nada, okay? Even with their announcement on October 9th, which we will go over again, um, 
you know, this is a company that is looking for growth. And um, as long as that they don't have that and they have an aging IT infrastructure business and they do dabble in um, areas of AI and, um, you know, they're trying to get into that cloud services, but that is already cr crowded, crowded, crowded. Okay. So what happened? They reported decent earnings in July and um, um, they reported after hours and it popped the next day and then dropped and then proceeded to just sell off. Okay, for the next, you know, a week or so. And so that kind of has been the trend. And of course, um, what's going to happen, um, we'll give you our prognostication in Q4, which is tomorrow. When we look at the Q2 situation, um, we know that they reported earnings by this um, circle here, and it dipped. And so there may be a po uh, potential drop from the top of the, um, if you front ran this, an 8.8% um, decline. But then it basically bottomed out and then decided to run up. Um, it was a pretty decent quarter, and they were very optimistic that their turnaround was in, in, in place, and so um, the market bought it for that period. But it's just this up and down alternating quarter, up and down and up and down. Q4, like I told you, is a very bearish month for the stock. Um, let's go into Q1. Again, pretty optimistic um, earnings result, and they popped and then proceeded to sell off for over, about a week. Okay, and then um, reversed and went up. Um, so the previous um, October 2019 earnings was um, similar. Basically, they reported earnings on this day and then a massive drop, 7.5%, 7, 7 and then proceeded to fall for a couple of days. And so if you front ran this, you could have taken the 7.5%. Now, is it worth the risk? We never recommend that you front run. But, you know, sometimes um, if you're in the gambling mode, which we don't advocate, um, that, that is a pretty large range, 8.8% here, um, you know, 7.5% here. Now, when we looked at the July uh, month earnings report, um, again, they reported decent um, and they were optimistic about their turnaround plan and they guided higher. So the stock went higher and then went, moved up a little bit higher for about a week and then it sells off. This stock is a very weak stock. And so if you're patient with this and um, kind of do your own technical analysis and, um, you know, kind of put a point where it, it, it can break, it can be very lucrative um, about a week after three to five days to about week, week and a half after the earnings, if, especially if the price action was bullish, you can short this. But anyways, let's move right along. I wanted to just talk about the IBM business model and transformative period. Um, they're trying to reinvent themselves at this point. IBM is an iconic company that is no longer uh, the powerhouse that it is. It's, in fact, one of the cheapest uh, valued um, tech stock that's out there. And for all you value investors, maybe this is something that you look at. It does pay a dividend, um, but the growth is just shockingly low. Um, but it's priced that way, okay? Things are cheap for a reason. IBM, then again, is in a transformational period. Um, IBM, on October 9, 2020, uh, announced that it will shed the low-margin IT, which is about you know, 65 to 75% of their business, IT infrastructure business, and focus on the cloud services and AI, okay? So the problem with this is that IBM will find getting traction in this space and um, being able to compete will be difficult because many of the competitors, as well as uh, many of the upstarts like CRM, Twilio, and, you know, uh, CrowdStrike, and all of these people, um, it's super crowded, right? So as I mentioned, CRM, Amazon, Twilio, Facebook even is in AI, NVIDIA into AI, Microsoft in both cloud and AI are all dominant players looking for a piece of the action. I think IBM might be too late into this thing, and I think them announcing this kind of a restructuring plan maybe is, we think it's a um, harbinger of a terrible Q4 that might be coming. They're kind of trying to brace the market for saying that, hey, look, you know, look at all these um, things that we're going to do. We're going to divest this um, IT infrastructure business and get into cloud services and AI. But, you know, they're going to have to take a charge if they're either um, spinning it off or selling that business. But we don't think that losing, you know, their meat and potatoes of their business 
in the act of um, trying to reinvent themselves and getting into these fast-growing segments that's already overcrowded, I just think that sounds a little desperate. Like I said, it's not a harbinger of good things for Q4 2020, right? I mean, on top of that, traditionally, generally October month, which is Q4, has been a weak quarter for IBM, okay? Um, Just the way it looks um, from the historical analysis. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's go into this year's earnings and what the charts look like. Um, You can see that on Q3, um, they reported earnings on 720, which is here. This is the earnings report. Remember, they report after hours. And they were pretty bullish and optimistic about, you know, their, um, that they might be, they're actually doing well in their turnaround plans and their strategic turnaround plans are all in place. Um, but the truth remained was that, you know, nobody was really convinced that IBM is in a, has a solid plan put together. So what it did was, based on the earnings and the optimistic guidance, um, but an abysmal IT infrastructure business, okay, which is not growing at all, and they're kind of losing ground anyways, it popped, stalled out at the top, and then proceeded to sell off from 130 all the way down to 124-ish area. Okay, So um, we think that there's definitely a play um, that happened in July 20th. Okay, So again, It's all about the guidance and optimism that the uh, management could portray into the stock. And uh, that's a tough sell. Um, Q2, April 2020, uh, April 20th on Q2. Again, this is where they reported earnings after hours and uh, continued optimism on turnaround was expressed. They beat on EPS, but light on revenue, but they raised guidance. So, you know, it was a little bit light on revenue. They were saying, well, but we'll give them a pass because um, they were very optimistic on their turnaround strategy. So what happened? They opened here and then probably and, and decided to sell off literally from 111-ish area to 109.5 and stalled. It didn't go down much further. So it's very important to... Look at the guidance, if they guide higher, and if they could kind of pull a magic rabbit out of their hat, um, then um, you need to kind of look at it stalling here, and then if it stalls, then we buy calls, make it move up. And it proceeded to move up um, for um, five days, okay, from um, 109.5 to 123.5. So there's gonna be ways to look at this, and um, if we see this type of action, you need to kind of look at what they say on their guidance. Now, Q1 is um, on, on the Q1 er- earnings, the um, revenues and EPS beat and optimistic guidance. They said that the core IT business was picking up steam and cloud services continue to be a bright spot or a fast growing segment. So Wall Street liked it. It gapped up you know, from 134 area and gapped up all the way and you know, popped all the way as high as 140.5. The next day it opened here. Again, dipped down a little bit, but stalled out and then rose right up. So again, this is where we need to kind of look at and buy the calls and then um, get out. But, you know, one of the things that IBM likes to do is whether in a few days or within a week, they start to sell off. And uh, because there's no concrete plans on what they're going to do to actually implement um, their strategy. So if they have a concrete plan about the cloud and AI and it's and they could convince the market, then yeah, I think this thing could pop. I mean, it's pretty beleaguered. But anyways, on Q1, this is what happened. All right. So on Q4, um, <laughs> in October 2016, so this was last year in October in Q4, they... Um, Earnings are bad, and and they basically lowered guidance and missed on the revenue. So guess what happens on October 16th? This is after hours report. Big gap down, and then basically decided to sell off. This is why I'm saying for those adventuresome people, I don't recommend it. I'm probably not going to um, short into this, um, front run it. But, you know, the, this is a pretty significant move from 134 all the way down to like 129 area, and then to... Um, finish in the next three days by the way if you're going to be buying puts and it stalls out in this fashion you know this is a multi-day swing trade so 125 so you know from the top 130 to 125 that's five points five dollars a move okay after earnings on tuesday it's not bad 
it's a good cash flow generator, right? Um, we can probably do about 200 to 300% on this if your timing is, let's look at uh, 2018. So they reported on October 16, 2018, and mind you, 2018 fall was a terrible, terrible correction that was going on. It seemed like it would never stop going down. However, um, be that as may, um, on October 16th, it reported earnings again, gap down, okay? From 124, the DTR on the first day was 124 to about 121, right? So about three points, but it started to sell off for about four days and bottoming out in this region, okay, 116. So not bad, 125 to 116, but this is going to be, um, for those of you smaller accounts or that don't have day trading capabilities, this is kind of what we're expecting to happen. I just don't see them um, beating revenues. Um, I think they're going to continue to guide down based on charges associated with divesting their IT business. Now, this was October 17th, 2017, right? Um, basically, at this time, um, expectations were pretty low, but they beat on revenues and had a blowout beat, okay, on the EPS and blowout on revenue. They gave inline guidance and warned on continuing slowdown of its core IT business, but optimism in its cloud and, um, you know, AI. Of course, they're always going to say that. So that caused a massive gap up, right, 127.5 to 137, okay, so almost a 10-point rise. And then proceeded to move up for one, two, and three days post earnings all the way up to 141. So again, it's it all it's all relative. This is why I kind of said earlier, hey, maybe it might be for those of you that like to gamble, um, you know, maybe putting a few contracts into this um, for an upside or downside move front running, uh, depending on what your mood is. But then I'd rather put money onto a blackjack table or a roulette table than that. But one thing that I did want to say is that even with this optimistic run after the uh, day three, so you want it to run um, as long as you start to see the stalling out action, okay, and you see the RSIs and some of the other components diverging, um, you can take a short position. I mean, because this was at 141 and ended at 133 in uh, three days. I think IBM will pay if you can follow and find out where they stall out, okay? So if they move up and then they start to stall out, take, take puts because you know, we're gonna know where the top line is or the resistance level is. Okay, I did throw in uh, 2016 earnings because, um, you know, because we think 2017 was an aberration. Um, so in 2016, they reported EPS inline revenue was a slight beat and inline guidance. Okay, guidance is key. So what happened? They didn't like it at first. So again, this is what I'm saying. Hey, look, maybe it might behoove us to front run a little bit for those of you that like to gamble. Okay, because that would have given you 131 range to 124. I think that's enough to offset some of the IV pump. And IBM um, contracts are not that expensive to begin with. But a better play was that it opened here and then hit the lows you know, from 126 to 124. That's like $2 move. And like I said, I mean, really hard to justify getting into a $2 type of a move unless you front ran it. But then again, again, goes up one, two, and three days and then sells off um, the following day. So this, as it stalls out right here at 128 level and selling at like 124, was probably the better move. Again, um, only time will tell um, what it's going to do. So what are the key takeaways? Well, with the exception of 10-17-2017 earnings blowout, IBM has struggled mightily in Q4. Okay, It is a bearish month, and currently it mirrors closely to 2018 Q4 earnings with daily charts having a bear flag formations, and um, those are the analogs that we see. But really, in terms of earnings and fundamentals, guidance is going to be key. IBM is a dying dinosaur and desperately needs to reinvent themselves, right? But we don't know if the management is capable of that. The fact that they announced on October 9, 2020, that they will be reinventing themselves as a major cloud and AI player. You know, they have Watson. They have some promising things. It's not like it's 
bad. I just don't think the management could pull it off. So the issue then becomes is, well, if they're going to be divesting this, um, isn't that an admission that this quarter's earnings are going to be terrible since they're still reliant heavily on their IT infrastructure business? And if they are saying that they're losing ground to some of their major competitors, that's not going to be very good. Now, the stock popped and sold off aggressively as shown in the chart um, you know, in 2018. So we expect the stock to go lower, potentially on charges associated with divesting the legacy IT infrastructure and maintenance business. But the optimism and cheerleading on cloud and AI potential might give it a little pop that we can short into. Okay, so watch the revenues and guidance. That's the key. If they somehow have blowout numbers and they're super excited and they're basically saying, yeah, Watson, the AI is going to trounce everybody, including NVIDIA and Facebook and everybody else for light years ahead, then yeah, we can see this thing pop really, really high. And at that point, we need to make sure that as long as it doesn't stall out, you can buy calls. Okay, now. One thing, uh, the next thing is I wanted to kind of go over some of the technical analysis aspect of this. And so um, just bear with me here. So what we want to be able to do is the following. Now, we want to we know that the stock is stalling out right about uh, the 135 level or close to it. Right. And so this was slightly lower and then it popped. This was the time that they announced that they're going to get into cloud and AI, right? And then, oh, we're going to just jettison and get rid of our IT IT side. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what kind of plan they have. But look at the RSI at that point from here to here. And then, of course, it's sold off aggressively. Okay. So, and then since then, um, for the last week or so, it's basically made a bear flag um, type of a pattern, right? So, so everyone see that? Stalled out right here comes right down and then forms a bear flag. So the question is, are we going to have a symmetrical move? And, um, you know, this <laughs> MACD is ready to form a death hook here. And so we think that the action will be bearish. Okay. How do we play um, IBM at this point then? Um, what do we, you know, what's the most prudent way to play this? Well, if IBM is moving into cloud, is an admission of a terrible Q4, you might want to take a gamble, for those of you gamblers out there. Not recommended. We're not saying giving any investment <laughs> advice or anything, but front-running earnings, as this can create a lucrative 8 to 11% decline, offsetting the pumped IV, right? But if it doesn't do that, then you're just going to end up losing money or just would have been better off just waiting and seeing after the earnings report. And that's what we recommend. It is very likely they will accentuate the future of cloud and AI, but this is already a crowded field. And I think it's already been priced in as evidenced by October 9th announcement. It just got sold off on that news because there was speculation all year long that they were going to do this. Now, Q4 is traditionally a weak quarter for IBM, so the prudent play is wait for the earnings release after hours, and if the stock pops and stalls and short the top for multi-day average two to four days, a swing trade for a DTR of 8.5 to 11.7 points. Okay, but you're going to have to hold this because on the day of earnings, it's probably only going to go down like two to three points. Okay, it's not a fast mover in that way unless it's really bad, right? Um... Because the stock has a tendency to have a first day gap down potential in Q4 earnings, it's worth the gamble for experienced traders with big accounts that like to gamble, right? To buy a few puts ahead of earnings and add more puts the next day. Not recommending this, but uh, you saw the DTR and the size of the gap, and we think that that might be the case um, this time around. If the stock gaps down and stalls and doesn't go down more than another dollar to dollar fifty after a gap down, it's going to reverse. It's, it's had a history of that. So if you notice that, it gaps down, but it can't just break through. It doesn't go down two, four, five, six dollars like it should. Then buy calls for a quick um, day trade on the in, um, trend reversal opportunity from bearish to bullish. DTR range is about 3.5 to 6.5 points. You can bag 150 to 200 points, 200% uh, off of that. So our recommendation, what we're going to probably do is um, look to buy puts in the morning, watching the guidance, but knowing that if it stalls and it gaps down and stalls, that we might switch to calls. Listen to what their plans are for the cloud and AI business. If it's just a bunch of bullshit and if it's murky, 
then it will sell out for multi days and you short the crap out of this one. If you want to learn more about this or want to join our 13 Market Moves Alert Services or learn how we do this on a daily basis or join our community or you have questions, click the link below, schedule a complimentary 20-minute consultation. Trading wins and losses is just like everything else in life that is worth fighting for. Do you remember your marriage? Man, it was beautiful when you were getting married, but you had no idea how ugly the losses of this divorce were actually going to be. Like opening a business, thinking you'd get rich overnight. But in the midst of it, you ended up maxing all of your credit cards just to sustain that business for a few years before you even realize a tiny bit of your first profits. Like buying a house thinking it would go up in value forever and ever. Just realizing how wrong you actually were when 2008 hit. Like having kids, it was such a great idea at first. Remember how excited you were, terrified and scared at the same time, how much joy you actually had. Until your kids turned two. Man, the terrible twos. You thought that was bad until they turned 13, 14, 15, Shit, but you wouldn't change it for anything. You love your kids, no matter what your emotional losses or wins are with them, no matter what your financial losses or wins are. It really doesn't matter, does it? You don't quit on your kids, no matter how tough things actually get. For some of us, it's the same thing with trading. Just think, how long are your kids going to be your kids? The answer is forever. How long do you see yourself trading the markets? If your answer is forever, then you owe it to yourself and your kids to invest in the 13 market moves formula so that your life journey of trading would be most rewarding and joyful, both financially and emotionally. Live to trade, trade to live. Conquer the world one trade at a time, fearlessly using the 13 market moves formula today.